Is it me you were hoping to see? Yes! <laughs> you... What the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's fool. <laughs> Like they say, sound and murder is mine, sound and murder is body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! Another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless. I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> This should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matters to No, it's wrong! Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How is it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. For one, the cause
cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes! That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Can you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? Remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I used my own specially designed scissors for the murders the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac! There's actually one more difference! Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case! There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Take your bullseye right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. They were all... guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little What's wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fan girl! And the mopey side of me just hates it! But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged fan madam! So, since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you would be killing? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid! I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line! That's the absolute reality of the one and only! We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely, when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly Kerr! Slowly, Kerr? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival! And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors! Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high class envy of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Da -da -da -da! Hey, 
She's fully equipped! That's right! So I can go anywhere, anytime! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong! You can't can you gutter dogs, all of you! Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot! <laughs> the rope's totally out of the question anyway! <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore! Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah! That's why we figured it had to be the real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever. Here's my answer. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the genocide jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask. When would you say I began acting suspiciously? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. to check out the girls' locker room. <laughs> you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I you wish you'd take me with you. But he was acting weird. Ah. If you are presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, <laughs> you absolutely take it. 
That's a natural reaction for any guy. The victim was Chihiro, who was a good No, it's wrong. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I've never seen that rope before in my life. No, it's wrong! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. Then Yakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Tell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling us a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but can we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. 
how could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey! Don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. I got it! The proof that she was killed somewhere else is... the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boobed supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used to think I was in the main hall. Huh? What then? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh, 
Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked us, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst. You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts glaring! So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya! Hold on a second. I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. What the... You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait! Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This'll make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. <gasps> For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Examine her carefully? Like using our hands? No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's... Probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just... based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S Sakura... What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... It... What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. This... This girl is... Is what? Is a boy! Ah, I see. So she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. <laughs> it's really true? Jiro was... a guy? Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Jihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! <laughs> he was a cross I wish I had killed him! 
So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Ahem. I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but... Yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever, we still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting... It makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, and then again when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but it's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. 
Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? <laughs> <laughs>